Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Trinidad and Tobago government pushes to increase its debt ceiling in light of the effects of the pandemic on the country's economy. This story takes a lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Thursday, 8th July 2021. Details when we return. Hubbard's big promotion is back. Live free for one year. Spend $50 or more in any Hubbard's department and receive a chance to win. Big prizes every month. Property or vehicle insurance for one year. Free internet, cable and data for one year. Free fuel for one year. Free cooking gas for one year. Free electricity for one year. Free drinks for one year. Extra cash account and the big free groceries for one year. Promotion runs from April 1st to September 30th, 2021. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Sol Gas, Flow, Grenadian General Insurance, Cara Brewery, Coca-Cola, Grenada Bottling Company, Grenlec, Communal Corporate of Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny and Supreme. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. Independent and opposition senators in Trinidad and Tobago are sounding a warning as government seeks to increase the country's borrowing ceiling under the Development Loans Act for the third time in just over five years. Government is seeking to get an additional $10 billion as the fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic continues. TV6's Renessa Cutting reports. We're increasing it from $55,000 million to $65,000 million. This measure has become necessary because of the deficit financing that has taken place in 2020 as a consequence of the COVID-19 pandemic and the worldwide recession and issues with respect to revenue. Unexpected challenges brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic are what the finance minister identifies as the primary motive behind government's push to increase its borrowing cap by a further $10 billion for the second time in just over a year. But opposition Senator Wade Mark says the issue is not what he calls government's insatiable appetite for borrowing, but rather how government intends to repay the debt with no new revenue streams and an economy in lockdown. This government, by its reckless borrowing, Madam President, is indebting the future generations of this country and whilst, in, whilst destroying the very industries and sectors needed to free them from this debt trap. Madam President, every time we borrow, somebody has to pay. Meantime, one independent senator is questioning exactly how much of the additional $10 billion would be used for COVID funding and how much of the previous $10 billion was utilized for this. Clearly, it is evident that more support is needed. But when I listen to the Minister of Finance, it seems to me that the, the fiscal position is far worse since we are seeking to increase this limit by $10 billion to finance primarily recurrent expenditure. In this regard, Senator Duna Ryan is cautioning that TNT is heading into a crisis situation as a result of what she dubs a policy of borrowing to survive, as opposed to borrowing to stimulate the economy. We are trying to avoid further joblessness and hardship. It is essential that we, pre at this point, it is essential that we try to prevent the country from regressing further. A fiscal adjustment of almost 10% of GDP will be required to maintain, to maintain debt at its current levels. That is almost a $15 billion cut that will be required in expenditure. Senator Diona Ryan forecasts that TNT's debt-to-GDP ratio will average 97% by 2023. Renessa Cutting, TV6 News. Guyana's opposition filed two motions of no confidence against the Interior Minister and the Minister of Health. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana has some details. The APNU AFC coalition today filed two motions of no confidence against two ministers of the government. 
The motions were filed with the clerk of the National Assembly, and they seek the removal of Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony and Home Affairs Minister Robson Ben, as the two no longer enjoy the confidence of the opposition in addressing issues related to their portfolios. With regard to the Minister of Health, the opposition believes he has bungled Guyana's response to the COVID-19 pandemic and should no longer be heading the health ministry. Just after submitting the two motions, opposition leader Joe Harmon told reporters that there can be no confidence in Frank Anthony as health minister because of his failure to put proper systems in place to tackle the pandemic. Uh, we all know that the situation in Guyana with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic continues to spiral out of control. The deaths, the number of deaths, there's about 478 or thereabouts today. And this is basically running like a runaway train with no perceptible plan on the part of the ministry, of this minister, to deal with the COVID situation. And Mr. Harmon expressed concern once again about the procurement of the Sputnik vaccines through a middleman in the United Arab Emirates. Although the government paid for the vaccines in full and in advance, it is still awaiting more than 100,000 doses of the second dose, which is needed to complete the vaccination of persons against the virus. More than 100,000 persons across the country are now waiting on that second dose of Sputnik, and the government still has no idea when those doses will arrive. Mr. Harmon said the government has been playing around with the lives of citizens and continues to fail to present full and concise information on the vaccination deal that saw Guyana going through a middleman and paying twice the price. And so as of now, we are still not satisfied that this minister and the Ministry of Health has taken the condition of our health and the health of our people seriously. And so what we are saying is that on behalf of the people of Guyana that we have no confidence in Frank Anthony to run the affairs of the health of this country as a Minister of Health and we have asked that the House sanctions him and that he be called upon to resign immediately. The opposition leader also wants to see the removal of Robeson Ben as the Minister of Home Affairs. Mr. Harmon said it appears as though even the government has lost confidence in Ben since the administration is making moves to set up a secretive regional security force. The government itself already has moved a, a con no confidence motion in Ben by setting up an alternative police force to deal with crime. When they came to the house and asked for money for a regional force, a regional entity that is a new entity that ostensibly has to deal with crime. Crime is a police function. And if your own government is saying that, look, we need to remove this function from you and give it to somebody else, then in fact what they are saying is that they do not have the confidence in Ben to be the Minister of Home Affairs. Harmon told reporters that while crime statistics are being hidden locally, other countries have been warning their citizens against traveling to Guyana, and that is worrying. If you look even at statements that emanate from the United States Embassy here in Guyana as, as, um, as advice to their citizens, they are saying that crime is out of control. Crime is out of control. Once approved by the Speaker, the two motions will be listed for debate in the National Assembly. With the government holding the majority in the Assembly, the success of the motions might be a long shot. But their presentation and debate could unravel key issues and information related to the security and health sectors. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick.
The Barbadian Parliament has given the green light for the Cabinet to take more than $11 million from the Consolidated Fund to continue assisting former Barbadian Liat employees as well as families affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. More in this Barbados Today news item. The sum of $1.74 million will go towards ensuring that the airline workers who were sent home last year without any severance can continue to receive financial assistance, while $10 million will cover the shortfall on the government's Adopt Our Families program so that those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic can continue to get assistance. The monies are part of a $34.8 million supplementary to the 2021-2022 estimates of expenditure, which was approved by the House of Assembly on Tuesday morning when a resolution introduced by the minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strong, was passed. This money is for the remainder of this um, financial year. And I know that the, the, the first payment started in May, and th this will go to making the, that expiration payment on behalf of, of those Barbadian um, employees of LIAC. Of course, pending, obviously, the resolution of these, these circumstances with LIAC being registered uh, and operated from Antigua. Once that is resolved, but we, we felt it was important that some relief is given to these workers in this way, which um, will help to ease um, some of the, the anxiety and burden as it relates to, to, to what effectively has been the cessation of the business, the business model of, of LIA. As for other Barbadians who were impacted by COVID-19 and received assistance on the government's Adopt Our Families program, Strong said an additional $10 million was needed to supplement the approved amount at the start of the financial year. This is to ensure that the program can continue and that the persons who still continue to, to um, benefit from this, from, from this particular initiative, that they can continue to do so. Um, Barbadians still continue to, to, to donate to that program and I urge them to continue to do so if they can because it is important, Madam Chair, that he, um, Ash notwithstanding, certainly, and certainly with respect to the coming out of the, the last lockdown earlier this year, now we've, we've had the experience with Hurricane um, Elsa. It is critical that obviously these families that were, were already in, a, in, a, in some level of financial stress, that we at least continue to be able to support, to support them in this particular um, way. Um, until such time as the economy can recover and persons can, can return to work in full and be able then to, to um, support themselves and their families once again. Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the food fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The food fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or the foodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.